Howdy everybody, it's Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician, uh, out here on this wonderfully cold day, trying to get out from underneath some of these nightmare jobs that I personally made some mistakes on over the summer, and so I'm now just trying to get everything figured out and get them built and put back together and done. So today, I'm going to be working on the yellow Nissan again for a little bit. While my wife is home taking care of the kids, that way I can work and not have to be distracted every five minutes getting a glass of water. Daddy, I'm hungry. Daddy, I'm thirsty. Daddy, he looked at me. Daddy, she pinched me. <laughs> so, so yeah. And I thought, you know what? Even though I made some mistakes on this deal and uh, now I'm dealing with it, it, it's still a good opportunity to, to share some information. So... This is a 2004-2005 Nissan Sentra Spec V. Um, no, no different than like the Type R or the Spec V. Basically, what it is is a 2.5 liter engine in it has uh, the variable valve timing system. Gives it just a little bit more up and go. Gives it amazing gas mileage. And if you ask me, if you take care of the engines properly, they will run forever. A known 300,000 mile car. So um, this one, I'm going all the way through. Uh, if you check the previous videos, it had some valve issues on it. And so the cylinder head was sent out to the, to the machine shop. All brand new valves, all brand new guide seals, everything brand new on it uh, from the cylinder head up. Complete rebuild. And then on top of that, uh, also redoing the timing and everything else. So this video will cover um, setting up. Your secondary timing chain, also known as your balancer chain, on the bottom of the engine here. And I'm going to put you in my little homemade camera holder here. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do when reinstalling this chain is make sure that your crankshaft is lined up accordingly. And if you see that little dot underneath that porthole right there, that's going to be your mark on the engine block to line everything up to TDC, top dead center. And you're going to want to do that by lining up the keyway on your crankshaft with that dot to the best of your ability. Uh, you can get a socket that will kind of fit on the end of this and catch those keyways there. Or you could reinstall your bolt and just simply turn it and line everything up there now on the bottom you're not going to worry too much about that mark if you can see it there on the bottom uh, you're going to use that mark to work with your chain and get all that lined up okay there maybe this will give you a little bit better view so you're going to have a mark on your bottom gear there you see that mark don't worry about lining that up with anything but the mark on your chain when uh it's time to put the chain on the only mark you really want to be concerned with right now is the dot right there underneath that porthole and your crankshaft keyway go ahead and get that lined up oh all right Once you've got that lined up, here are the new parts and the old parts. So, once you've got that lined up, you're going to want to. The only thing that you're going to worry about right now installing your main crank gear for your timing is going to be your keyway and then your mark on your gear there. So once you install that, you want that to be at the 12 o'clock position. And then uh, from there, you've got your lower tensioner that fits around all that. And I'll show you the installation of that. And you've got a spacer here um, on your chain. Okay. You're going to have 16 links on one side and 17 links on the other side you're going to want all your slack to be on the right side when you're installing this and i'll show you how to go ahead and do that you're going to go ahead and want 
to line up your mark here with your blue marker on your chain. All right, so go ahead and line that up. And then on the bottom, you want it offset. Let me see if I can get a good lighting for you there. So that that secondary mark is offset, not at six o'clock. You're gonna want it at, let's say five o'clock. And that's how it's gonna install. Okay, so we've got our chain and our gear lined up with our blue link here. Now on one side of this chain, you're gonna have 17 links. And on the other side of the chain, you're gonna have 16 links. Okay, you want the side with the 17 links so that your lower marker on your chain is offset at five o'clock to be on the left hand side, okay? So you want the longer of the two sides to be on the left-hand side or pointing towards the passenger side of the vehicle. Okay. And then just go ahead, make sure everything's lined up on your crank. All right, and again, you want the slack, you want the slack in this chain to be towards the front of the vehicle or front of the engine on this side. Just make sure that your marker is lined up down here. Don't worry about where you're pointed so long as you get all your slack over here. Now I'm gonna go get our tensioner. Okay, and so now, comes the fun part of installing the tensioner and as you're installing the tensioner don't worry about this moving too much just you know you don't want too much slack on this side you don't want it to be like that you look also make sure you don't jump a tooth like I just did check that out okay Pay close attention to what you're doing because you can easily jump a tooth, as you just saw. So, once you do that, go ahead and wrestle your tensioner in. And the only thing you're really concerned about is the crankshaft moving off of TDC. So long as the crankshaft is lined up, you're in good shape. I went ahead and just double checked once I felt like I had it lined up to make sure I didn't jump a tooth in there. Okay, now these three 10 millimeter bolts for the tensioner, they don't have a high torque specification. I think it's in the 18 to 23 inch pound range. So make sure you look up your torque specs. <clears throat> and uh, there's no need to crank down on these. Matter of fact, if you crank down on them too hard, you'll break them.
All right, so now we're good there. Last but not least, we want to go and get our spacer and get that installed. All right, now I'm gonna install my spacer. There we go. Okay, so I'm not gonna do it, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. I personally like to wait until I have every timing chain tensioner installed, ready to go. But when you're ready, okay, this is the locking mechanism that, lo that keeps the piston from moving backwards, okay? And that's what this pin is here. So what you're going to do is you're going to pop this pin off, remove this pin. That'll give you the tension here, okay? So that, that'll, that'll give you your tension, and then once you've popped this off and you have your tension, go ahead and pull this pin, and you'll see this move, and that will lock that piston into place and keep it from going backwards. Now at that point, this piston has the ability to always move forwards, so as the gear and the chain wears or stretches out to keep it tight, it will compensate and adjust by moving forwards. But this locking mechanism right here keeps it from going backwards. Okay, so there you go, folks. And that's how you install the balancer chain uh, or the lower chain on a Nissan Sentra Spec V 2.5 liter engine. If you have any questions, Make sure to leave me a comment. Give me a holler. I really enjoy interacting with you guys. I also love um, hearing your suggestions and how jobs go for you guys and all that other stuff too. So hit me up. This is Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician. Thanks for coming out and hanging out with me. Thanks for supporting me. I am signing off. You know what? Actually, I want to change that, guys, uh, here. Instead of saying thanks for supporting me, I like to add thanks for supporting me and my family. And so this is Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for supporting me and my family. I am signing off.